Welcome everybody, we are on site at Founder World in San Francisco. I am joined in the studio right now by Bill Santana, CEO of Nightscope. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Glad to be here. Awesome. So, you have probably the most visible product here today, and it's because it's all around the building and at the front door. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Sure. Nightscope's developing technology in the long term to be able to predict and prevent crime. Uh, we have uh, five foot tall, three foot wide, 300 pound machines roaming around here that generate 90 terabytes of data per machine per annum. And we use that data for two things, uh, for the obvious monitoring and surveillance and also to influence our uh, autonomous navigation stack. Um, our step, uh, one big step to get to that long-term vision is to do anomaly detection and looking at what is quote unquote normal in an environment and giving a, a private security guard or a law enforcement officer, let's think of it as smart eyes and ears for them to do their jobs more effectively. So if we think about that, you have your you have your bots that go around kind of key autonomously. areas. Autonomously. Yeah, autonomously, right? And so this then feeds into either like a system that you guys run or into like a, an internal security system that a company would already run. Right, so most com large corporations, which are our customers, would have their own security operations center. They'd, we would actually uh, download a Chrome browser and be able to log into what we call the KSOC or the Nightscope Security Operations Center. It's a browser-based user interface that allows our clients to interface with the machines. Um, humans aren't all that great at reviewing raw data, sure. uh, but they're really good at event analysis. So we have the machines do the monotonous, uh, computational heavy, and sometimes dangerous works, and then let the humans to do the strategic work. Sure. And so how um, precise has it been in actually uh, you know, false positives or, or actually putting things up that are of interest to the humans for the event analysis? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different opportunities there. Some of it is just uh, plain simple sensor analysis. If you've got hyper-local temperature, humidity, CO2 and pressure, you can do some interesting things with that. Or you can like, once you start gathering all this data, if we're doing optical character recognition on license plates and a client asks for um, you know what, we need a parking meter. You let me know if any car has been parked here more than 24 hours, or 48 hours, or 72 hours, and you can just keep sending alerts based on that simple rationale, or you can look at uh, parking utilization for a retailer. We know the number of parking spaces, we operate mostly outdoors. Uh, any number of parking spaces, we know the number of vehicles we've seen over the last hour, we can give you utilization rates. Or, you know, simply at a mall, between 10 p.m. and probably 6 a.m., there should be no one there. If we see a person, raise your hand and let the guard know. Awesome. So, you've been at this for about two years now, I believe, just over. Yep. Right? So, where is it today? Like, obviously, there's bots out there right now doing the job. Do you, are these out in the, in the uh, marketplace? Are you selling them right now? Yeah, so we're actually deploying technology now with our... Uh, customers, we signed our first few agreements. We've got about 104 customers on a very long wait list. And one of the reasons we're here at Founder World is uh, F50 was very kind to twice invest in our uh, in our financing. So we were oversubscribed on our seed round. We we're oversubscribed on our Series A, and uh, looks like we're going to be oversubscribed on our Series B. And um, you know, wanted to share with the founders here that. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, don't ever let an investor tell you no. I mean, it was the first year was very hard because uh, what we're doing is a complete outlier, right? Who would wake up one morning and say, hey, let's take like robotics plus autonomous technology, sensors, analytics, and, and big data and combine the whole thing and we're going to go after a space that isn't really an investment thesis for most funds, right? No one's off doing, disrupting the offline security industry, right? That's not like, that's not a... Sure, yeah, I've never seen and that. So it's, Kind of very difficult, but if, well, you know, my team and I, we stuck with our guns and everyone told us that this would be one impossible or take $50 million to build the first one, sure. it's never going to work. And uh, we're pretty happy that we've made a lot of progress in a short period of time. Yeah. Listen, we've still got a lot of work to do to get to our grand uh, vision, but yeah. if you look at crime, the problem's really severe. Uh, part of the theme for the conference is let's start thinking big again. Yeah. We've been thinking big for the last two, two years and if you look at crime, it's actually a one trillion dollar negative economic impact annually on the U.S. alone. Wow. You add up all the murders, ambulances, lawyers and everything else, it's a hidden tax and a very large one that we all pay every year. But if you think about innovation, 
over the last hundred years has been what innovation in the security space? Uh, I think there's been a taser, a bulletproof vest, and maybe a camera. Sure. That's the extent. And having been born in New York, um, pretty upset over what happened at, after 9-11 or at 9-11. Um, we just as a country haven't really been investing in the space other than cybersecurity. And I think there's a huge opportunity. If you look at the Department of Defense's budget, we have maybe now significantly larger than $600 billion a year spent by the Department of Defense to give our troops every level of capability you might ever imagine. And I'm, I'm good with that. What I question is, two million law enforcement professionals and private security guards get up every morning, are willing to take a bullet for you and your family, and the level of technology that we provide to them as a country is certainly beneath the dignity of our nation. And I think it's high time that entrepreneurs demand that we make some serious change because let's say we hit our grand vision. We cut crime by 50%. What does that do to society? Talk to me about housing prices. Talk to me about insurance rates. The viability of someone's business, the safety of your family. Everything changes. And that is a worthy goal to work on. So that's awesome and you're clearly very passionate about it. Was there, what's the inspiration? Was there like a, a coalescing moment for you that, that kind of set you down this path or? Um, two or three things. Uh, one, as I already mentioned, 9-11. Um, the Sandy Hook shooting um, a couple of years ago was, so 26 innocent people get shot in an elementary school. I don't believe the founders of our country expected that when you got up every morning, that you went to school, you went to a movie theater, you went to the mall, you went to the library, that you'd have a risk of getting shot. Sure. That's, that's not acceptable. And somehow as a society, we get up every morning, turn on the news, and we see something horrific and we move on. It's not okay. And so that was part of it. The other part of it, if you look globally, we have seven plus billion people on this planet. We're gonna grow to nine billion people. Having traveled around the world like most people, trust me, I don't think the law enforcement or the security apparatus is gonna scale. We need a better way to do things. And we need to do them more efficiently and we should be able to leverage the technologies that exist and uh, develop some new ones on top of all the great foundations that Silicon Valley has provided us. So that's a really interesting point. Um, so here at Founder World today, there's all sorts of different technologies spanning all sorts of different kind of verticals. Um, is there something that you see for your space, uh, besides obviously drones, that would be uh, a next wave or another really good addition uh, in order of innovating that space? So something like virtual reality or you know, machine learning? Um, or yeah, there's something that we, a couple of things. One is uh, the machine you see outside is probably the smallest one we'll be building. Um, so there's different form factors depending on uh, what our clients might need. Um, so certainly iterating on the form factor is an opportunity. The user interface can be very interesting, right? Uh, what you saw outside in terms of the case SOC is basically a two-dimensional view of life. There's no reason that could not be an immersive uh, opportunity for a crime analyst to understand what's happening. And I think there's also an opportunity a little bit further down the road to crowdsource security. Now think about what happened after the Boston Marathon bombing. Everyone was actually trying to help. Uploading stuff on YouTube, tweeting, sending all sorts of stuff out. But if you're the crime analyst, exactly like where am I supposed to look? Right? And if you ask the FBI how long did it take you to get the data from Boston to DC to analyze, you know, depending on who you believe, it was about two weeks. Right, that can't be happening. And so that user interface should be an opportunity to combine a lot of the gaming technologies, some of the augmented and virtual reality stuff that's happening uh, in the long term to give a crime analyst a real fulfilling and um, real time immersive environment to figure out what the heck is going on and how to deploy resources. That's really cool. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate you having me. And thank you guys for joining us. I'm Corey, and we are on site at Founder World in San Francisco.